Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I'm going to explain <coughs> the real-time monitoring of reactions using thin layer chromatographic techniques. How TLC could be used to monitor the progress of the reaction, whether the reaction has been completed, the reactants has been consumed, or the reactants are still present, forward has been formed to some extent to or to a greater extent with the passage of time or the reactants are being consumed, the forward is being formed but there is a formation of a byproduct is there as well. So the TLC is a simple technique which, which could give us clue about the progress of the reaction, whether the reaction is moving in the positive direction, is it moving with the passage of the time, the reactants are being consumed, or the reactants are still there, we need to go for some uh, change in temperature. If the reactants are not going to react after, let's say, after a few hours, we need to look, we need to think that either we need to enhance the temperature of the reaction or we need to change the catalyst. So, TLC could give us the idea. So, TLC for real time. monitoring of reactions. In my previous um, lecture, I've given you basic idea of what is TLC, how it is performed, what is the concept behind the movement of the uh, compounds different fractions present in a single compounds, why they move, why some are retained and why some move it faster. The very basic idea behind the movement of the compounds on the TLC, they are supposed to be on the basis of on the basis of polarity, on the basis of the polarity, compounds, either they are polar, non-polar or have a sort of a medium sort of polarity. So this will make their movement accordingly on the thin layer plate, you know. Let me just give you a recap. We used to prepare smaller thin layer chromatographic plates using uh, cutting the aluminum um, sheet of aluminum covered with silica. And then we mark a baseline just sort of a half centimeter from the star of the TLC plate. And we Let's say if a, some sort of a reaction is running or we have some sort of a compounds given enough beaker, some sort of solution is there. We used to take one drop, we, we used to take just a little bit of the compound with a capillary tube, you know, and we just deposit that on the baseline of the TLC plate and then we let it run for a while. Uh, let it dry for a while in fact and then we take this plate and we put that in in a beaker in the TLC beaker and TLC tank where we have a solvent here. The solvent starts moving on the plate. Remember the level of the solvent should be less than this at least this uh, line you know. The solvent moves on the TLC plate, it dissolves this body in and then keeps moving up with passage of time. 
we let the solvent run, we let the solvent move on the TLC till it reaches the upper lane. Then we take the TLC out and let it dry for a while. Most of the time we see visually some sort of spot on the TLC. If a single spot appears on TLC, it means this compound which was present in the beaker, it's a, some sort of a single compound, pure, only one fraction. If this spot is closer to the baseline, means this compound which was given to us is a sort of a polar one. Why polar? I've told you yesterday, the layers of the TLC plate is layered with silica as the glass covering is there as a protective layer on mobiles. Let's see this layer, protective layer is a sort of a thin aluminum foil, very covered with very thin film of silica and those silica carries hydroxyl ground groups on the upper surface. Those silicas are interconnected through like this sort of bonds, but their upper surfaces carry hydroxyl groups. So many hydroxyl groups are present. So if the compound is a polar, it will form interaction with these polar compounds. It will not move high. It will remain closer to the base where it was deposited. So it will remain closer. At the end, we could see that the polars hydroxyl group would have retained, would have retarded its movement on the TLC. So this bird is a, some sort of a <coughs> polar compound and it's a single fraction. On the other hand, if we deposited the compound on the base, let it dry, then we run the TLC again in this similarly. And we found that after the end, at the end of the TLC, we find a spot on the upper area close to the upper lane. It means this compound from here to here has moved a lot. It has moved a lot. Means it has not been retained, not been restricted, not retarded by the hydroxyl group on the surface means this compound is supposed to be some sort of a non-polar because it has not received any sort of a resistance from the polar groups. Who gets resistance? The one who is polar. If somebody don't get resistance then it moves faster and achieves a high position of the TLC. So then one can see that this is a spot bit higher on TLC. So this given compound is supposed to be a, some sort of uh, non-polar in nature and a single spot mean it's a pure one. Let's say we have run the TLC and we see any other few spots as well, smaller ones, minor ones. So then we can see that initially we deposit only a single spot taking from this beaker but when the TLC moved the solvent boom the TLC plate three different spots appeared it represents that this compound which was present in the beaker is not pure some it carries one non-polar fraction and two other <coughs> one very small polar fraction and some of sort of medium polarity a fraction of some medium polarity so it carries C fractions major compound is there and two smaller fractions mean two impurities are there two impurities are there so this is how the TLC basically <coughs> separates the fractions present together on the basis of their polarity the more polar compound will remain closer to the base. The non-polar compounds are supposed to move as much as they can on the TLC plate. And the compounds of medium polarity, they are supposed to be in the middle of the plate.
So this is how one can imagine the polarity, the polar nature of the compounds <coughs> and the number of spots could refer us about the presence of the fractions in the given compound. So this is the basic idea which could be used to <coughs> monitor the progress of a uh, reaction on, on real time basis, you know, by real time mean when the reaction is running. So one can uh, check whether the reaction, uh, check the progress of the reaction, you know. Let's say I'm taking a very basic uh, example. We are reacting two bodies. One is called the reactant A, the other is called reactant B and we are supposed to get some sort of product C. You know, so we start off, we got a plus there, you know, we put in some sort of solvent, carry some sol solvent, organic solvents, and then we put in reactant A. Hmm? We put in reactant B. Then we take this flask and put it on stirrer, you know. We need to use some sort of stirrer. We need to put some sort of stirrer which rotates. Hmm? We put the reactants to react with each other, it rotates, you know, the, the, the mixture inside the flask. Oh, as soon as we have put in A, we have put in B, both A and Bs are present. Let's say I can say it's a reaction time is zero, zero minute. We have just put in A, we have just put in B. So what will be, we have, I could, at the zero minute time, we have 100% A, we will have 100% B, there will be 0% C, because the reaction have just started, we have put in A, we have put in B, both are present, 100%, 100%, 0% is this one. So what we do, we prepare, we made a TLC plate, we put a capillary into it and get one up pretty small amount of the reaction mixture and we placed over here at one corner or maybe okay so we put it here we put a drop here and over here we can write R M means reaction mixture, you know, in the beginning, right in the beginning, we have put it over here. Or we can write it, let's say we can write it uh, zero min, reaction at zero minute. We, we, we need to write over the line, not below the line, because below the line it can interrupt the movement of the uh, molecules, you know. Let we let the reaction run it. The reaction is running, let's say, like four hours. After four hours, these bodies would have reacted with each other. Some sort of its fraction would have been consumed, some sort of fraction it would have been consumed, and some sort of the reaction product would have been appeared, you know some sort of the product would have been appeared over there in the flask but they are all present in the flask we have no idea what is the reactant molecule who is the product molecule so after four hours we put this 
another capillary to the reaction mixture, we took one again drop and then we put it here. Okay, let it dry for a while. After one minute, we will take this TLC and we put this into a TLC solvent. Let's say some sort of solvent is there, hexane is there, non-polar solvents are preferred because the layer of the thin layer that's a polar stationary phase is a polar so we can keep the mobile phase non-polar we could use let's say simply hexane generally we use solvent system a fraction of a polar and a larger amount of a non-polar solvent mix them together and we use them as a TLC solvents I will explain that later what is the concept of the TLC solvent? Just let me explain it in a, in a pretty uh, simple way. So, two, after four hours, here is one four hours, the other one at zero minute, we let it dry. We let it run, you know, after drying, we have let it run. The solvent will move from here to here and the plate will get, dry, uh, you know, wet with the solvent until the solvent reaches at this point at the upper lane we take that out we take that out and we let it dry for one minute or two let's see what has happened this drop the one we take from the reaction mixture it shows two spots one and the two the one which is closer to the base and there is we see two drops spots at the same times from this spot we have one one and we have almost three spots at this side it's a single plate which carries two types of drop one drop was placed when the reaction was started you know now we have placed a drop when the reaction has run for four hours then we put the plate and we let it dry. We let it, um, after drying, we let it run in the TLC tank, TLC uh, beaker, you know. So what the first indicates, as I've told you in the beginning, when the time was zero minute, one was A and one was B, both are 100%. So one of the two is A, we have no idea what is A, or what is B? One is A and one is B. Two, one and two spots only, which means A and B, one, two. Two are there. No other product in the beginning. There was not supposed to be any product in the beginning, you know. So, then we developed the TLC represented two spots mean in the beginning when the time was zero yes two reactants were there so two spots were supposed to be there after four hours the spot which has been taken after four hours when it is developed on the TLC it's represented one two three spots so what does it mean? We should have only two spots. It carries three spots. The third spot is supposed to be from the product. Now we have to find which one is the product. We have an idea in the beginning when there was only two reactants. This was present and this was present. So this has to be correlated with this one. So this spot and this spot, they both can be correlated. This spot and this spot code means they are the reactants which were present in the beginning as well when the time was zero minute and they are also present when the time is four minute. And this is new body which was not present when the time was zero minute. It has appeared after the four hours. Means this is the product now. This is the spot of the product. As the smaller Spots are also present in relation to the other reactants, which means still reactants are also there. So we will have to keep it running 
the reactants are also there the product is also there mean still the reactants are there and they are they have to they are supposed to interact with each other it means we should let it run for next 4 3 4 hours again so that the all reactants should consume should react with each other from this tlc we can see that the smaller amounts of reactants are present all smaller amount of product has been formed as well so what we will be doing then this product this tlc which has been developed which has been put into the reaction uh, tlc solvent has been developed no it has nothing to do for further uh progress monitoring we let it run it for 4 hour again for four more hours the total time is 8 hours now 8 hours of reaction time you know then we got then we got an other tlc after 4 hours we got another tlc plate and we took one a little we put in a capillary into the reaction mixture got a little amount and we again deposited on the base on line on the tlc plate as we do you know let it dry for a while then we take this tlc plate we take it from here and then we put in a beaker which carries uh tlc solvent let's say i'm putting the beaker around it so the beaker carries solvent the solvent will move we will let it move till it reaches the upper lane then we will take it out let it dry again let's see this has disappeared as the reaction solvent will move up this will disappear from there let's see now we see only a single spot is there only a single spot appears on the tlc then we will bring this tlc the one which was in the beginning we will bring it together we will put it together we will put it close to check the relatives you know what has happened on that tlc what was there something like that we brought this one closer so mean these two bodies at the zero minute both reactants were there so these reactants are not present up and below this spot this spot mean reactant spots has disappeared it means there are no more reactants are available in the flask reactants has disappeared from this tlc we came to know that the middle spot is supposed to be a is supposed to be product over here the one which we have taken after 8 hours only there is a single spot in the middle no more spot mean this middle spot it could be of a could be of a product and it's in the middle there is no reactants no reactant spot then we can assume that this reaction has been completed in 8 hours there are no more reactions reactants available in the flask only a product spot of the product is has been appeared on the tlc so we will assume that the reaction has been completed we will stop stirring we will remove from the stirring and then we go for the work up we will go for the extraction of the product and the all related uh, work up procedure we will adopt to purify the product this is another subject of how you purify your product this is what i'm trying to convey you today guys how tlc could help you to identify your reactants your products it could helps you to monitor the progress of the reaction at zero minutes both would be 100% so you will see only two spots there okay two spots will be available so as there won't be any c at the zero minute so only two spots because two reactants with the passage of time let's say after 4 hours some of the reactants would have been consumed some of the product has been formed so both reactants are present in lesser amounts their spots would have been reduced in size they would have become smaller in size which confirms their amount has been reduced whose amount reactants there will be a appearance of the third spot confirms the presence of a product is there 
and it's it will be of smaller size in the beginning because in the beginning after four hours there is a less formation of product because still there are some reactants are present after eight hours there won't be any reactant spot there will be a bigger a larger spot of a product mean the product has been fully formed no more reactants are available then you can assume the reaction has been completed and you can turn off the stirring you can go for the extraction for the purification of the product so this is how gentlemen plc a thin layer chromatography is a basic technique very simple you can use that for the uh, determination of different reactions whether they have been uh, completed or still the reaction is in progress if you find the reactant spots are still there on the TLC even after 8 hours you are supposed to let the reaction run again for the next few hours before you uh, take another TLC and again you need to check whether the reactants are available or they have been consumed this is how you could find whether the reaction has been uh, completed or it is in progress this is how we can really assess the ability of the reactants for their uh, for the formation for the synthesis for the formation of the products if the reactants are super fast uh, super energetic they react they react too fast then the reaction would have been can have happened in four hours six hours or eight hours sometimes reactions are of only of less than one hour you know in ordinary lab chemistries and then you can have your part in one hour or most of the reaction in general chemistry they require 12 16 or 24 hours in your textbooks you would have seen that most of the times two reactants are given one product is given some reactant conditions are given then there is written 24 hours how those hours are measured how they came to know that the reaction takes 24 hours it's a simple tlc technique which gives them clue which can give us clue as well the reaction takes how many hours 10 12 16 or 24 or maybe beyond that sometimes 48 hours something like that so real time monitoring real time monitoring when the reaction is running you can keep checking your reaction after a couple of hours take another tlc next one or two after one or two or more you can try you can take another tlc check whether rectants has been disappeared as soon as the rectant disappeared it means your product has been formed now let me give you another aspect of this one let's say in the beginning we started with the tlc at zero time you will not suppose to have only two spots because we have only two rectants and we do expect a single product there should be a single spot in there let's say if we find more than one spot if we find two spots there even after the formation of, of the completion of eight or twelve of hours we find two spots instead of one spot one the larger one the other one is a minor one smaller one then one can assume that we have two products in the reaction one is a major and the other one is a minor product you know depending upon the size of the spot on the TLC one can roughly assumes about their quantity their quantitative analysis that the, the spot a bit larger in area can be a major product and the other spot it's a minor one it can be a minor product again the position of the spot on the TLC could also confirm the nature of the product if we find a spot of the product in the middle of the TLC we assume that it is of us a medium polarity nature not very polar not very non-polar it's a medium polar however if the spot 
remains closer to the baseline then we assume that means with low RF values we assume that the product is supposed to be some sort of polar it's a polar molecule polar nature however if this spot appears on the upper side of the TLC closer to the upper lane then one may assume that the uh, product is supposed to be uh, sort of a non-polar you know this is a simple analysis simple appearance of the spots on TLC plates suggests the nature the polarity of the product it suggests the progress of the product and it suggests the productivity of the reaction whether one product whether more than one product whether the reaction is a super fast it completes in six or eight hours or the reaction takes uh, 24 hours or maybe beyond so these all these factors all these uh, parameters could be assessed by the simple application of TLC that the thin layer chromatography as I've told you in the beginning it separates compounds on the basis of their polarity when we have two reactants obviously they will have a little bit difference in their polarity so on the basis of their polarity they are supposed to appear as two different spots on TLC if they have a one is very polar the one is very non-polar so they are supposed to be very apart from each other if there is a, a little difference they will be closer to each other so as the polarity difference uh, increases between the reactants their spots moves away from each other if the spots are closer to each other means the polarity difference is not that much between the molecules whether they are reactant molecules or they are product molecules when you came to know that they are the reactant molecules the molecules which appear in the lane when you spotted only at the zero minute they will be of the reactants and once you performed another TLC after two three four hours the spots corresponding to the reactants they will be the reactant and the new spots the emergence and the uh, appearance of the new spots that will be regarded as the spots of the product one spot mean a pure product more than one spots will represent the formation of the production of byproducts as well so this is our simple technique could give us uh, the idea about the progress of the reaction so this is what i'm trying to convey how the tlc could be used for the real-time monitoring of the progress of the synthetic reactions if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask me you can post the your questions in comment area or you can approach me through email or whatsapp thank you very much for your kind attention please